Now, so there's this uh, uh, thing about small vessel disease. So in our heart, in our heart, there are three tiga, tiga, three main uh, arteries. One in the center called the LAD, left anterior descending. One on the right called the right coronary artery, RCA. And one on the left called the left circumflex artery, LCX. So there are tiga, there are three main uh, 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 arteries of the heart. Now, these arteries of the heart actually also have their own branches. So some of these, for example, the LAD will have a branch that comes off the LAD that's called the diagonal branch. So I presume your question refers to one of these small branches. Um, there's an argument that if you have a small branch blockage, 90%, 99% blockage, uh, actually, it may not be necessary to put a ring. Uh, number one, maybe too small for a ring. Number two, it may not be, it may not add more benefit. Yeah, because the the branch only supplies a small part of the heart, small part. Only. So it, you know, it, it may not confer any more benefit if you put a ring there, as opposed to if you put a ring in the center artery because the center artery will supply big parts of the heart. So if you put the ring there, and then the benefit is a lot. You understand what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Uh, the other thing about a small vessel, let's say, for example, the small vessel is supplying quite a big area of the heart and the doctor feels that need to put ring. If the ring is too small to go in, there is, a, there is a, a, another technique that we can do, which is just using the balloon. That means the balloon has a special drug coated on the balloon, just like the same drug that is in the ring. Yeah. This drug will be delivered as we open up the balloon. The drug will be uh, spread out into the blood vessel and keep and hopefully keep the blood vessel uh, open. The balloon is not permanent. The balloon will open. The balloon will then be taken out. So there's nothing left inside. There's no metal, no ring left inside. So oftentimes people with acid, gastric acid reflux, they come to see heart doctor like me because they have chest pain. So a lot of times people with acid reflux, they have chest pain. But usually the chest pain is this kind of character. They often describe it as burning, like something very hot burning there. And then they have a sometimes throat pain that is like a, pressing on the neck and oftentimes they are burping, gouging a lot, burping a lot and they have a sour taste in their mouth. Yeah? So that is the kind of uh, chest discomfort that you get when you uh, uh, have acid reflux from the gastric. Now people with heart attack pain, uh, they often the pain, uh, like I mentioned before, it's like a heaviness, heavy, like someone stepping on your chest, heavy, and then very hard to breathe. Uh, and some people also get jaw ache, arm ache, yeah, left arm ache. So granted, it is uh, difficult for a non-doctor uh, to differentiate between the two. So my advice is uh, if you have any of these symptoms and you're not sure, Always just go and see a doctor. Pastikan perjalanan medismu tanpa repot bersama Somek. Banyaknya syarat untuk berobat ke Singapura ataupun Malaysia membuat repot selama pandemi ini. Selama 12 tahun, Somek didukung SOS Ambulans Udara melayani pasien untuk berobat ke Singapura dan Malaysia. Somek mencarikan dokter spesialis sesuai dengan keluhan kamu. Somek juga akan membantu proses perizinan ke Singapura dan Malaysia. So, tunggu apa lagi? Hubungi tim Somek untuk perjalanan medismu.
Okay, so I think this is also a very common uh, misconception. People think that the calcium in your, in your heart, you know, we do the CT scan, uh, people say the calcium score 1000, uh, calcium score very high. People think that the calcium in your heart is because of the calcium that you take. Salah, salah, wrong. <laughs> uh, the calcium in your heart has got nothing to do with your calcium tablet that you take or the food that you take, okay? So it doesn't mean that you, you take more calcium supplements means you have high chance for, for, for jantung being blocked. No. Ah. So that is a completely different, uh, uh, different. So as I mentioned before, people with uh, jantung pain eh, usually is very vague. It's somewhere in the center, very heavy. But people with muscle pain, that means uh, 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 not the heart muscle, but the, the muscle of your chest wall. And sometimes maybe the bone, the connection between the bone, the cartilage there, sometimes people have a bit of inflammation there. So they get a pain. And that, yeah, if it is a jangtong pain, you press, will also make no difference. The pain is inside. But if you have a pain that is, uh, not in the center, at the side, at one spot, and you press, become worse, then it's more likely a chest wall muscle or ligament or bone pain. Yeah? So, uh, yeah, that's the first question. Second question is uh, high blood pressure medicine. Uh, I would say 90% of people who take blood pressure medicine will need to take for life. But there is a group of patients who because after they take the medicine, they lead a very healthy lifestyle. They exercise, they are salt, they take less salt, uh, they you know, eat moderate diet, they have maybe less stress from external, from their work, from family. And then when they see the doctor, the doctor finds, hey, the blood pressure is actually quite low. Then the doctor will try to stop or cut the dose of the blood pressure medicine and then carry on. And then subsequently, they continue to lead a very healthy lifestyle. And then the, eventually the doctor may say, maybe you don't need the blood pressure medicine to keep your pressure down. You carry on with your healthy lifestyle. And so this group of people will, uh, can do without blood pressure medicine next time. Jangan lupa, like dan subscribe.